Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Plans video. In this video, I'm going to explain all the progress updates on the SWL 120 since the last main update. So, let's get started. There are three main like points of progress that I'm going to talk about today. They are the cockpit, which we have here, the tactical manual, and the airport vehicles. Now the cockpit updates are pretty self-explanatory, like the overview of them, like I've worked in the cockpit. Now the other two areas, I'm going to start with the airport vehicles. This is a project that I had an idea for a long time ago when I first discovered that you can actually control AI vehicles. I should probably forget that one. 12 seconds later. So I have this test car, and the basic idea is if I have this, I can control it using only this joystick. So pitch and roll do not actually work. Brake does work, but there's no way to change that. Then I can spawn this as an AI vehicle, and I can actually control it using that same joystick. So essentially, anything I can just click using my mouse. I can actually control on an AI vehicle. And the application I first thought of was that I can use this to have airport vehicles such as this pushback tug that I can spawn in and control, say it's back at the plane or to have like a markup of a refueling. And then when I'm done with them I can just despawn them. Or I can just like just not have to have them as part of the plane file. So I can spawn in and say right in the gate and I can spawn a pushback tug push back to plane, despawn that, or just park it somewhere else. Then I can fly over to say Yiga and then spawn another pushback tug there and or, and or anything else I want to. And that's a basic overview of that. And the third item that I'm going to talk about today, which I'm going to actually start with first, because it's like pretty simple right now, is the tactical manual. And the purpose of this document is to not only just tell you how to start the plane, but actually explain in detail like mind-numbing detail, what each control in each part of the plane does. For example, for a single left wiper dial, it's self-explanatory, you click it, you have wipers, but I wrote a whole paragraph on everything it does. And then I'm either going to have another document, or maybe it's actually part of the plane itself, and that's going to be a checklist which tells you what to do with all these controls. So this just tells you like what each thing does, and the checklist tells you what to do with them. This is similar to the SWL 10, like in the description of the post, I had pictures, label pictures, of all the controls, and then a checklist in the plane. This is just more detailed than that. It's really all those to explain here. I'm not going to put any images in yet, because I kind of need a finished aircraft to do that with. Well, that's all there really, really is to explain here. Now I'm going to talk about the tow truck. Now, as I just explained, it's designed to be spawned as an AI vehicle. And another thing I added to the plane, and much of what I showed this before, is to control all the vehicles, in, especially in, vir in virtual reality, I'm going to need to have a camera that's in the vehicle somehow. But I can't change to a camera on the vehicle because, well, all the cameras are on the plane. But, I added this little hatch here. Just get a good angle of it. Where I'm going to store some cameras, like, think an orbit camera and a first person camera with like four wheels and a car engine and then you can you can move that underneath the AI vehicle then use a magnet maybe on the AI vehicle to attach the camera to the AI vehicle and then you can either on PC just use your mouse to click and drag all the controls or in VR you can actually just control it as if you would as like as you but control a normal plane. Let's actually take a close look at this pushback tug. Now, with pushback tug designs for like airliners, there are two main types: a tow by list, which I have here, and I don't know what the other one's called, but it's like it's like the default. I thought I put something from Wikipedia on screen right now. But I have a t I have a tow by list design here. What that means is there's simply no tow bar here. Instead, the truck actually scoops up the nose landing gear, and that's how it tows the plane around or pushes it back. I haven't done any mechanisms for actually attaching to the nose landing gear, but the truck itself is finished, and if you don't spawn it as an AI, you can drive it. 
Don't need a lot of work. I'd say it's pretty good. I also have a prototype for some of the mechanisms. So, this fuselage here, if I move VTO up and down, this fuselage goes up and down because it's attached to a control base. I'm going to use this instead of pistons because it's just easier to control and there's no smoothing at the ends, like as a piston. Hopefully, I'm making sense again. Up in the uh, cockpit, I think. Ooh. No, it's cab. Up in the cab, it's not finished, but all the basic layout is there. We have t two seats, drivers on the left, and speedometer. If I just reset, the speedometer actually has a bit of code to it. I made it so it's always at the 20 mark. Currently, the speed is actually tied to the plane behind me. But as it, acce it accelerates, you can see how the speedometer, like, just, it's basically sort of m clamped to be a minimum of 20, but it has a little bit more code than just clamp it between 20 and something. And also, if you get fast enough, you get rid of the steering wheel somehow, it stops exactly at 200. Just another feature I added, so it doesn't just keep going over and over. Now, another feature that I've added, which isn't present in real-life turbulous tugs, but in this one, is where everything inside this yellow circle, so all the seats, the steering wheel, everything, can be rotated to turn around. So that way, you can drive. What well, you can feel like you're driving the tug forward. However, you're actually driving it backwards. This doesn't rotate just yet, but it will. I've also made sure that nothing will clip into the walls. So if, you, if I rotate this, in the design which I'm just going to do now, nothing actually clips into anything. Something that I haven't done, which I'm just going to might as well do on camera right now, is make it so you can actually control pitch and brake with the grips. Should be pretty simple. Control, pitch, and the second one should be brake. There's no way to actually test if it works. Aside from VR, so now if I grab the steering wheel and I press my right trigger, I do a to go forward, which is working out pretty well. And if I press my left trigger, then I brake. Pretty much all there is to it. And what this means is if I'm controlling this as an AI vehicle, even if I have rudder pedals set up, I can't use those because that will control my plane, and not the tow truck. So I actually have to use what you'd normally set up for VR where everything can be controlled only using your hands. Another thing about this tow truck is it's actually speed limited. I can't remember what speed exactly, but I think it's like 30 kilometers an hour or something. Which is again, just like in real life. There's also a door on this tug. Very simple to operate. Just click the handle here. Or you can click the handle on the outside. And that's actually it for the tow truck. So now let's move on to the cockpit. And by cockpit, I actually mean overhead panel, because I haven't really done too much work on the actual cockpit. So I'm just going to focus on the overhead panel in particular. If you compare this overhead panel to the overhead panel for my last progress update, you'll notice it has had a pretty major rearrangement. I've added new modules and I've also updated existing ones. Most of the controls here are labeled, so some of them are pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to explain what all the new ones do. So starting with panel brightness, this actually doesn't do anything, like at least in simple planes. But in real life, what it would do is it would have three dials to control the brightness setting of the backlighting of these panels. For example, I'm just going well to show you now. Currently, I do have backlight on-off settings, so if I turn the overhead switch on, back to power. You can see the backlight turned on and off. It's more evident at night. You can see here. Now what the, say, overhead panel brightness knob would do, if it was working, is it would allow you to select from 1 to 100% how bright you want the panel to be. I guess this would be 100%, and then 0% would be like this, off. It'll just give you like more control over it. Even though I couldn't get it to work, I technically could get it to work, but I'm not going to have 100 labels per module. There's too many parts, even for me. So I just put the dials in and just fuse large parts. Just so they're there, but you can't use them. Similar to the temperature dials. 
Pocket lights have stayed the same, same with anti-ice and external lights. Now seat heat, this is just a simple seat heater. In the captain's seat, the first officer's seat, and the jump seat. All it does in simple flames is just turn on this light and get straw electricity. I actually code that. Now generator disconnect, that is the biggest of the new modules with most buttons. And what this does, it does actually work if I say start the APU. Fast forward through that. What it does is pretty simple. It disconnects, not that one. It disconnects the generator that you click. So if I want to disconnect the the first APU electrical generator, it says active and this is set to no gen. Pretty simple. There's just that for all the other generators. And the other three modules, if I actually turn it off, I have not actually gotten around to working on them. I just put in some placeholder modules. I'll just throw this image up on screen. But I do have some plans for what's going to go there. Just more useless stuff that you can still play around with, but it doesn't actually have too much of an impact on the actual flight. Now the two modules that I've tweaked, that is the fuel module and the AP engines and APU module. In my last progress update video, I think, well, in one of my recent videos, the fuel module had six tanks, so 12 total pumps, four for the left, so inboard and outboard left wing tank, Two cylinder tanks and inboard and outboard right tank, right wing tank pumps. I've replaced this with a three tank system because in my fuel video, whatever it's called, I actually couldn't get that to work. And I've, I do have a part two of that video in the works, but I again couldn't figure it out. And the solution to my problem is to make it simpler. And I'm still waiting on how to write the code for that. But this is how it's going to look in the final plane. Three tanks. Then we have the engine and APU module. Previously, I had a smaller module, but when I re rearranged the overhead panel, I just wanted it to look like the, all the other ones, all the other modules. So I just made it taller. I also wanted to add some information about the APU, which is all displayed here. And I was actually going to put that above the an old engines and APU dial module. But when I rearranged it again, I just had this empty space here. Didn't want to put this down here. So I just put it in the screen here. I also had an APU emergency stop button, which is just it's like a fire extinguisher module down here. So it's just like this, but for the APU. It's pretty simple. All it does is just cut off the APU fuel supply. When you turn it off, you can actually start the APU up again. And that is really all there is to explain. I haven't done four months worth of progress, but I still have a few things I've been working on that I might as well just show off right now. Oh yeah, there's also this, I forgot to explain this. I did, it's a pretty simple fuel system display. It just has the quantity, the fuel quantity in all of the different tanks. Which for some reason is broken right, oh no, it does work, it's just really slow. There you go, it just, the AP just doesn't draw much fuel, I guess. Actually, if I start up an engine, that'll draw more fuel. It helps to add some fuel. There we go. So I've actually have an engine running. Then it draws more fuel. You can see it going down. This is technically a fuel system because I have three different simulated tanks, which you can see here. If I add more power to the engine, then it draws more fuel. But it doesn't have things like cross feed. It's just that engine one draws fuel from the left tank, AP draws fuel from the center tank, and engine two draws fuel from the right tank. There's also the emergency dump. I'm pretty sure I've showed this off before, but I'm just going to show you again. If you go to somewhere that's actually in the air, um, say here, while I'm upside down, Ho hopefully I'll have the footage upside down again. But you can see that it's dumping a lot more fuel than the engine would draw. And that's really all there is to explain for this update. I do have some videos lined up, such as the making of the tow truck and other airport vehicles, and a part two to my fuel system video. I just thought I'd make this video just to show you what, what I've been working on. So I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!